Fanatic. My name is Fel Fanatic, and today we are jumping into uh, a newer game called Crystalline. It's by the same developer, uh, Pixel Fade, that made Ace Academy. I loved Ace Academy. It was great. I do plan on playing Kaori after story at some point, even though Yuna is best girl. Just saying. Um, but I'm excited to get into this. I have literally no idea what it's about. And that's how I like it. So without further ado, let's just jump in. Oh. Male main character's first name. Uh crap. <laughs> let's see. Um I've done Vale for I've done Dalian. Have I done Vaughn? Uh let's see, Vaughn. I've done a Velier. Let's do a Villier. Enter? Last name. Oh, uh, crap. There's a last name involved. Fainreal. A Villier Fainreal. Actually, no. It's... If I'm going off the little book series. Oh, my God. I butchered that spelling. Off the book spelling and the little uh, books I want to write. Maybe that family name. Typhus. <clears throat> what? Is this a library from Ace Academy? <laughs> <clears throat> Alright. Mm. I just woke up, but maybe 30 minutes ago, so. I can get myself in the part. Alright. The library is far more quiet than I would have expected at this time of night. The only sound is the gentle hum of the air conditioner. Whoa, that was too close. I blink my eyes wide open, then I stifle a yawn as I stretch to wake myself up. Focus! Ow, that actually hurt. <laughs> Messing my hair. Ha uh, ha! Finals is just around the corner, so I can't afford to slack off. Glancing around me, I notice I'm the only person left in the study cubicles. It is getting pretty late. Uh, I'll go back to the dorms as soon as I finish this last chapter. I flip to the book, only a few more pages to go. I could do this. Stealing my resolve, I refocus my textbook and scratch my eye, apparently. Alright. Oh. Jump scare much? The words in the book blur together as my eyelids grow heavy. I fight to keep my eyes open, but my lids continue to droop. I'll just rest them for a second. Something jerks me awake and my eyes blink open. A bright light illuminates the room, blinding me until all I can see is a stark whiteness. I throw my eye, my eye, my arm over my eyes to shield it from the light. After, after a few seconds pass, the light seems to dim, but it doesn't feel like the same fluorescent glow of the library bulbs. Carefully, I unwind to bring my arm down, squinting at the pale blue sky. Or oh, a pale blue sky, whatever. Uh, a mild breeze tussles my... Is that how you spell tussles? That's tussles. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Uh, blades of grass tickle my neck as they wave in the, uh, the wind. Where am I? I'm about to push myself up off the ground when something pops into my view. A round blue blob with dark... Uh, two dark eyes blinks at me. Wow! Pui! <laughs> it bobs slightly, like pudding. When it notices my stare, it opens a small mouth and takes a dainty bite of my uh, dainty bite of my nose. What? Oh, I need a voice of like any character. Should I do overbearing? Uh, she'll be like, hey! <clears throat> nah, screw it! Why not? Hey! The creature's bite doesn't sting, but it, uh, it feels like a cool splash of water. Before it can take another, I scramble to my feet. The creature tumbles off of my head, the sound effect, and it falls onto the ground. Once it lands, it shakes itself off with a gelatinous tremble, clearly unfazed. It hops up to my foot and then opens its mouth again, but I quickly shake it off. It rolls off my foot and into the dirt, then rights itself up again. Boy, boy. It pouts and continues to watch me, but doesn't attempt another bite. 
What is that thing? Poi? He cocks his head as if wondering the same about me. Well, that's unsettling. Uh, I take in the scattering trees around me. Their tall branches kiss the sky. There's a winding dirt trail that weaves through the trees. As I follow in my gaze, as I, yeah, so follow with my gaze, I see smoke billowing out of the thatched roofs of a village in the far distance. Where am I? Last thing I remember is studying at the library. That's it! I must have fallen asleep and I am now dreaming. Point? I glance out at the blue creature. What? And my response, it leaps up. Boy, boy. Is it Pongo or Pingo? I won't say Pongo. Whoa! I scramble away from it and it lands on the ground with a soft thud. That thing can jump pretty high. I need to be careful. What's your deal? Boy. It leaps again, and again I retreat. Stop that! I dodge as it jumps and I begin to run. To my surprise, the blob keeps pace. The series of nimble bounces. Boy, boy. Oh my god, it's like a cat that you feed. <laughs> Seriously, stay back. It musters uh, one long leap, and I turn the corner of a sturdy tree to avoid it, but I don't notice the other person until it's too late. Well, we painfully collide, and I lose my balance before toppling over. <laughs> Uh, fortunately, my hands catch myself, hurts me from my fall. When I open my eyes, I see a woman. Oh no, please tell it's not this cliche thing, right? Okay, good. Woo! <clears throat> my eyes are screwed shut and her mouth is twisted in a grimace. Her long blonde hair is splayed out around her. As she lets out a small groan, she blinks to open her eyes and fixes her gaze on me. Oh. What the heck? What is this answer? What is this? Not, not gonna lie, my first, my legit first response would be like, M my bad. <laughs> As I meet her gaze, my face flushes and my dog is asleep. Hi, right, Dino. Uh, and I push myself to my feet. Oh, look, this sort over here. I'm so sorry. You hurt? I, I can't keep my voice acting up. Apparently, I'm terrible. I extend a hand. She hesitantly accepts it, and I help her up. Sore, but otherwise I'm fine. Are you hurt? No, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, I'm sorry again. I should have paid more attention to where I was going. It's partially my fault. I was distracted. It's a lot more animated than uh, Ace Academy. Poi? The creature's right by my foot again. Are you serious? You're still here? The one looks surprised. A pongo. Pongo? It is Pongo. Jeez, all that Pokemon last night is making me see things. Pokemon? Pokemon? <laughs> oh no! Boy, boy. The Pongo bobs up and down by my foot and nudges me with his head. Aw, he's a cute one. I don't know what cute. He? Yeah, you can tell by the shape of his eyes. Oh, I would have never known that. Oh. I think he wants you to hold him. <laughs> it's trying to eat me! Uh, that's what it, that's what he wants. He tried to eat me earlier. Oh, don't be silly. He's harmless. The woman leans down and reaches from the pongo, but he hops away from her. You'll probably like this hand better. She extends her other hand and offers Pongo her gauntlet. Uh, he stares at it before turning away and hiding his face behind my leg. Boy. A pongo who refuses magic energy? Wait a minute. Are you a mage? That's not a real occupation. <laughs> I level 110 frost mage. Of course not. I'm a warrior. That's not a real occupation. I'm a student. Of magic? Uh, no. Uh, a full-time post-secondary student. She seems confused. You keep saying such strange things. She holds up her gauntlet in a faint, pale white glows. It pulses rhythmically. As she holds it closer to me, it quickens until the pulses almost look like one long pulse. She blinks in surprise. Wait, this heightened energy activity, it's you? I mean, apparently. She analyzes the magic swirly thing on her gauntlet. I don't see a discharger on you. 
the determiner. So then, how is it possible for you to have such a high magical energy reading? Are you carrying crystals? Is this a sting operation? No way, man, I'm clean! Huh? I don't do drugs. All right, Snera. She looks me over again. Never mind. It doesn't look like you're carrying crystals, or anything for that matter. <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. I was in the library studying for finals, and somehow I woke up here. So, are you from the Mage Academy? Not quite. <laughs> okay, I think I've dozed off long enough. Time to wake up now. She blinks in confusion. You are awake. No, this is a dream. She frowns. I can assure you this is not a dream. <laughs> oh, did my game freeze? No! Ah, oh, we have a technical difficulties! There it goes! Okay. Uh <sighs> time for a pinch test. You don't run into women this hot in reality. Oh no! I didn't think about this. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> only a dream could have a woman as beautiful as you. I definitely screwed and spread across her face. She liked that. Oh no. Ah! <laughs> she pulls her hand back and strikes me soundly on the arm. Ow! Still think this is a dream? Maybe. I'm less sure about it than before. She punches me again. Ow! How about now? <laughs> Tis a dream! Never! She wants her own back. Alright, alright, it's not a dream. Just don't hit me again. <laughs> she gloats. I knew you'd eventually come to your senses. So, if this place isn't a dream, then where are we? We're in Meadow Hill. Okay. Meadow Hill? Where's that? It's a part of the Kingdom of Havengard, of course. Don't know what that is. Haven Guard? She looks at me like I'm crazy. It's the largest of the three kingdoms, actually. Where are you from? Uh, oh, I'm from New York. <laughs> New York? Yeah, you know, part of the USA. USA. USA? <laughs> God! Alright. No, the United States of America. The United States of what? Never mind that for now. If you don't have any crystals, and you don't have a discharger, have you cast it recently? I shake my head. Then the amount of energy reading doesn't add up. Interesting. She rests her uh, chin on, in her hand as she thinks. A shiver runs through me as reality begins to set in. This really isn't a dream. Any ideas? She shakes her head. Maybe the Mage Academy can provide answers. Hopefully. This is freaking weird. Mage Academy? That's a start. Sounds good to me. How do we get there? Oh, it's in the center of Illumia. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, where? Illumia. You follow the path going north until you arrive at the crossroads. Then you head. So her voice trails off as she notices my expression, like, like I don't know. I'm actually heading back there now. You can come along if you want. Oh, look, we already got a companion. Look at that. As I contemplate her offer, I look at her. I look over. Look her over again. Can I trust her? Her posture is naturally straight and gives me an air of authority. Uh, she did mention she was out here for some sort of visual investigation. Plus, she seems friendly enough. I don't know. She just, like, sock you almost three times. Uh, besides, if I don't go with her, then I'll be wandering around on my own. Chances of me finding this Mage Academy alone without running into any unsavory people are not promising. I can't risk that. I need to find a way home. A nod. Thanks. I'm a Velier Typhus, by the way. I'm Leanna. Leanna Dawn. Nice to meet you. Uh, I hold out my hand for her to shake, but she just stares at it. I have to keep my hand out a few seconds, I begin to feel awkward. Her expression changes to curiosity 
as she gingerly takes my hand and grin broadly as I uh, shake her hand firmly. She's a bit startled, but when I got our gaze meet, she meet matches my smile. It's nice to meet you too. I look at her questioningly as she continues to shake my hand. She slips her hand away and blushes. Shall we get going then? Uh, ready as you are. So oh, Lord. Leona nods and bring us, uh, brings us back into the path. Then she walks in the direction of, of the village. The Pongo follows us, staying a step behind. Oh, okay, so that's the same button. Okay. Uh, we travel quite some time together. It's been pretty silent. I wonder if I should say something. Uh, I don't have anything pressing to say. That's that's about the Pongo. I glance behind us again, just as expected. The Pongo hops along. So, the Pongo's still following us. Niana glances back and grins. That's not too surprising. Why not? Pongos are attracted to magical energy. That's why it was so strange that it showed no interest in my manipulator. It's still following us, though. It's following you. Oh, boy. <laughs> my readings showed you're full of magical energy. As far as the Pongo is concerned, you're a buffet. Huh? As I think about what Liana said, I look at the Pongo one more time. This time he looks back at me and his eyes crinkle as he splits into a huge grin. Boy, boy. Uh, he leaps into the air and reaches the height of my waist. Whoa! Boy. He jumps high again, Liana giggles. I think he's tired of hopping. Uh, I guess I'll carry him. I guess it can be kind of hard to keep up when you're so much smaller than us. I hold out my hand and the Pongo hops right into my palm. But he doesn't stop there. Before I can react, he hops onto my shoulder, then jumps again to land on top of my head. Boy. <laughs> I feel a cool wiggle on my hair. Leona giggles again. What's he doing? <laughs> Nothing. He's just so happy. She reaches out a finger to stroke the Pongo, who chirrups contentedly. Leona, uh, Leona's smile broadens, then she clears her throat as she tries to take on a more serious expression. Her steps quicken as she resumes walking. Uh, so that's brought her here. So, not that I'm complaining, but what exactly are you doing out here in the field? The field? Where you found me. Oh, there have been rumors of high energy readings around Meadow Hill, so I was sent to investigate. I had already checked out the surrounding area, and there'd been no clear source for all that excess energy until today. What do you mean? When you met me? She nods. I hadn't been in the field for very long before you found me, though. Hmm. You might be a byproduct of whatever created the energy spike in the first place. What do you think that was? I'm not sure. I haven't seen readings of that level before. The Mage Academy should be able to help explain. Maybe somebody summoned me. I wonder what it takes to become a mage. So, besides magic, what else does the Mage Academy teach? Oh, all the basics. How to use a manipulator, how to control your energy, the many usages and differences between crystals and spheres. Crystal energy and spheres? I don't know what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> what exactly is this crystal uh, stuff you keep mentioning? You mean the difference between crystals and crystal spheres? Well, when we refer to crystals, we mean the raw crystals, whereas crystal spheres are the usable refined state. Oh, fair enough. That's awful, but I meant crystals in general? She stares at me and narrows her eyes as us to judge if I'm serious. It's the power source for, well, everything. I look blankly at her. You don't use crystals where you come from? Uh, <clears throat> no. Her mouth falls open and she looks at me in bewilderment. With no crystals, what else do you use to power things? Lots of stuff. I count on my fingers. The sun, water, wind, nuclear fission, uh, fossil fuels like coal or oil. Her eyes widen with each item on the list. I list. I was about to speak, but I'm not finished. Geothermal, uh, waves, tidal, hydrogen. Okay, okay. She shakes her head incredulously. I get it. You have your own methods of energy. Many, many methods. Liana's eyes sparkle as she falls into a pensive silence. 
A small smile plays in her lips while she considers what I've said. I might have overwhelmed her a little, but she actually seems interested in all our methods for harnessing inner energy. Ask about her gauntlet. Without seeming too suspicious, I tried to get a better look at her gauntlet. What was the thing she was doing with it earlier? Leanna noticed me, sh uh, noticed me staring and shifts uncomfortably. Are you okay? Yeah, I was just curious about your gauntlet. Oh, my manipulator? Uh, sure. All mages have a manipulator. It's how we use energy to interact with the elements around us. Wait, you mean you can cast spells? I suppose that's one way to phrase it. Whoa, can you show me something cool? Um, like what? Cast magic missile! D&D &D reference! <laughs> can you cast magic missile out the darkness? She furrows her brows. That's not possible. I look her straight in the eyes. You're right. She's very confused by my response, and is at a loss for words. I listen for the sounds of wildlife as we continue walking. I can hear the usual song of birds and the faint whoosh of uh, wings flapping in the air. Occasionally, there's a rustle amid the trees, and I even sweat at the bugs buzzing around my eyes. It all feels very familiar. Remind me of home. Liana clears her throat. So, you're from USA? U S A, but yes. Which kingdom is that in? Uh, how should I phrase this? <laughs> in the kingdom of North America. <laughs> she frowns and scratches her head. I'm a little ashamed to say I'm not familiar with that place. Where is it? On Earth. Earth? Okay, time to take a different approach. Let me see if I can explain. Alright, tell me, where are we at right now? In Meadow Hill. And where is that? In the Kingdom of Havengard. And where is Havengard? In the land of Asaria. And what is that part of? Terra, of course. Okay, so Terra is my Earth. She pauses and as my word sinks in, then she gasps. Wait, are you not from Terra? From what I've heard so far, I'm not. She looks concerned. How did you get here? That's what I'm hoping the Mage Academy can tell me. Right, but I mean, how did you come to Meadow Hill specifically? Do you remember anything before you were in the field? Think back, I was studying at the library and then I've been extra tired because that same day I have my evening classes. But I still remember everything about me and my past. Yeah? Hmm. Well, at least we know you don't have amnesia. I nod. She left his back into silence, looking thoughtful. I have a lot to think about myself. My head is swimming with everything I've learned so far. Although there are some similarities between Terra and Earth, I've only scratched the surface on all the differences. I really hope the Mage Academy can explain what is going on, and more importantly, how I can get back home. Hey, Pongo. Pongo flips in front of my eyes, and I carefully scoop him back into place on my head. Whoa! What happened there? Did you slip? Boy, boy. Is it my imagination or that boy, boy sounded like a little sheepish? The other looks over and grins. You were trying to get a good look at our friend here, weren't you? I flip over my head as I assume the pongo nods. Looks like someone got a little adventurous and lost his footing. <laughs> nice. Boy. I let out a chuckle as Liana giggles. Once the pongo is secured, we continue walking. He almost fell off. The sun dips in the sky and uh, bathes the tips of the trees in a soft glow. My feet ache in protest with each step I take and my legs are tight from all the walking. Yeah, I feel you, bro. Uh, finally, we come upon the perimeter of the village. Uh, Liana grins as she leads me through the gates. Here we are, Meadow Hill Village. <clears throat> I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Yana hardly seems affected by the long trek. We're finally here! I pull my arms into a stretch. Woo, that was quite the journey. Liana masks a chuckle. A journey? I nod. This time she can't quite hold back her laugh. Marriage. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. As she uh, resumes walking, I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. Oh, man. 
The village is still bustling with people even at this time of the day. I suppose they're getting in their last errands before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems focused on their own tasks. They barely glance at Liana, but when their gazes, uh, but when their gazes are drawn to me, they don't look away. In fact, their steps slow and they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal at a zoo feels like. Uh, Liana overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. Fair enough. What I'm wearing is normal from where I'm from. Even though the stairs are directed at me, Lana seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. Fair enough. I instinctively pat my back pocket where I keep my wallet. I doubt they'll accept card here or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. Uh, uh, that's generous of you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. I'll pay you back once I can. Leona smiles and nods. Um, am I calling the wrong name? Is it Leona or Leona? I've been calling Leona. Uh, she changes directions and leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of quaint shops lining both sides of the roads. Wait, there are... Rows, not roads. My bad. Uh, quaint shops. Okay. I read the signs as we walk by. Edward's Apothecary, Blackstone Forge, Dragon Scale Armory. Huh? What is it? I was just thinking of how convenient it is that everything's in English here. English? I should have expected the question based on how our previous conversations have gone. But I'm still a little taken aback. That's what we're speaking right now. We're speaking common. Ha! <laughs> nice! What? Liana pauses in front of a shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. I step into the shop and the first thing I notice is the overpoweringly musty smell of leather. Oof. It's not surprising considering the walls are lined with different types of leather wear. A small elderly man approaches from the back. A pair of round glasses sits on his nose as an apron hangs around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. His smile falters when he notices me. Liana clears her throat. We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Yes, yes, of course. I feel offended. Uh, the shopkeeper, the keeker, keeper, blinks back to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. That's the idea. So we're hoping. Uh, Leona smiles politely and strolls towards the selections. I check out two seemingly uh, identical leather vests, both of which are marked at different prices. I really can't see the difference between the two. Maybe they boost different stats? Hey, Liana? She turns around. Which one of these will increase my... Oh no! Oh no, I feel like this is an important choice. What do I do? Uh... <clears throat> oh, let me go. Okay. Probably doesn't matter at all, to be honest. I do like... I'm all, like, I'm a big melee person in like RPGs. Uh, strength or I don't know. Do I want to be dexterous? I think I want to be dexterous. Let's do dexterity. Dexterity. Um, I suppose leather armor will allow for greater range of motion while still providing decent protection. Uh, that's a benefit of the armor type. I mean, dexterity! She blinks. So none of these raise any stats. Liana gives me a weird look. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? I don't know if you consider cool points to be a stat. Uh, she looks just as confused as before. Never mind. Uh, she smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Liana and I pick out my new outfit. Hey, the sun's coming out. Once all the pieces have uh, been chosen, she goes to haggle with the shopkeeper. I've tuned out of the discussion and watch people passing by. 
So our clothing are simple in design, meant to be more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everyone walks around armed. This village doesn't seem dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. I nod and take the clothes from her. Once I have ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Luckily, it's because of pockets, and I can just transfer everything over. I, I pull my wallet and take a card. Why do I have a deck of cards? And loose chain. Oh man, the loose chain is everywhere. Next is my phone. I try to turn it on to see if it'll work, but it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. I get the feeling they don't have wall chargers here. Shrugging it off, I slip my phone into my pocket too. When I emerge, Leanna gives me a once over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you, just like a native. This look suits you. I match her grin. Thanks. Let's go find the inn now. <laughs> Does this boost my stats? Oh, what the hell did I just do? Okay, <laughs> I don't know what I did. Ooh. Uh, yeah, let's find the inn now. She heads to the shop and I follow her. Okay, so that's pretty much what happened last. Okay. Actually, maybe we can stop by the armory. She pauses and looks curiously at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Her question is careful, cautious. We go to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm, you do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. Why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practice kendo competitively. She blinks. It's a type of sword fighting where I come from. I see. Leanna falls silent as she gazes around the street. After an extended pause, she nods. Um, we head to the forge where rows of blades, ranging from long swords to short daggers, hang from the wall. There are guns on the wall. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> oh, Lord. All the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edges glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds out a red hot blade. Sparks jump from the clinging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Uh, Leon lets me browse the swords and reach for one that catches my eyes. As I gently remove it from the shelf, I miscalculate its weight and drop it. Oops. The steel scratches the ground with a sharp screech. The Master Smith pauses in his work to glower a warning. Uh, <laughs> Liana looks, but looks on in shock. Careful! I quickly wrap the sword back up and grip it tightly. Liana now watches me with intrigue. Is this the first time you've held a sword? Uh, just a minor miscalculation, I got it. Shake my head, I take a practice swing at the sword and it glides gracefully through the air. Liana looks impressed. Was that a move from your kendo? I nod. Not bad. I am curious. I'm from the USA. Does the USA have kendo? I swing again and the movement flows naturally. <laughs> and as the sword cuts through the air with a sharp swing, I can't help but admire how smoothly it slices. This is a high quality, this is high quality craftsmanship. Let's go over with this one. As before, Liana discusses the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. We make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we're finished, the sun is set and darkness blankets the sky. The town is aglow with soft lights glint from our, from within houses and the lampposts on the street. As we pass by a lamppost, I peek inside and see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. I take a seat at one of the crew tables while Liano talks uh, to the innkeeper behind the bar. There are scattering of, uh, of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone, nursing a tinkered of what I assume to be ale. A stifled yawn that I've heard, ch I've heard, I've had a chance to sit down. I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Anna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. Thanks. Uh, she nods. They should be coming out with our dinners soon. Then we should get to sleep. 
We have an early start tomorrow. <laughs> My stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. Leona smiles as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. My meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goofy thick stew and it looks about as appetizing as dog food, but it smells pretty good. Uh, what is this? It's stew. Yeah. What kind of stew? Rabbit. Oh. Hmm. A brief image of a cute fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. Is something wrong? <laughs> this bottom one! I'll eat non-GMO, all natural vegan, certified gluten-free, 100% whole grains, on trans fat, grass fed, no percent of organic pasture meals. Jesus. Nope, I'm good! <laughs> I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing's wrong, this is fine, thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? Uh, I'll be nice. Amazing! Even better than I expected! You know, grain as she digs in. Finish eating, Eliana cleans her bowl. The two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of a broom, and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to enter my room when I hear a small voice. Polly? Looking down, I see Pongo back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awfully silent. Have you been following this whole time, or did you lose us and find us again? Pongo blinks twice and bounces. Boy, boy. Whatever that means. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Oh. They're, they're essentially slimes. What's that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals, which are used to light lamp posts or other similar items. So they're rodents, apparently. Okay. Ah, I can see how that would be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. Fair enough. Got it. She reaches towards the pongo. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? Poi? Pongo snuggles against my leg and Leona sighs. I thought as much. <laughs> no pongo for you! Alright, she opens the door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. Open my door and step through. The pongo perks up. Hey, boy. Let him in. I step away from the door and I let the and the pongo hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room as if inspecting it, yawning wild, uh, widely. I almost said wildly. <laughs> no, widely. I collapse onto the bed. The pongo continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Oh. He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed, then he bounces to the foot of the bed and wiggles himself a cozy nest by creating a small crater on the top of the blanket. And that's what we're gonna, we're gonna call it here for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm excited to get back into Pixel Fade's next creation next time. Goodbye. <laughs>